Leanna says staying committed to getting through those final couple of years of secondary education was the hardest thing. But what drove her, and this is what she says, was I found out that if I could pass year 12, I could get myself into a different life, a better life kind of thing. Now, Mishash Paddy had challenges too. He faced the dual demons of alcohol and ganja. And he says that his life basically was just going round and round in circles, drinking, dope, you know, it was just not getting anywhere. And so he decided, inspired by the two women, to go back to school as well. Mishash nearly didn't make it. He walked away from school time and time again, but credits George and Robin and his community and the community, the, the council of the school, with providing the encouragement for him to go on. Now the key to the success of Rhonda, Leanna and Mishash were Robin and George Hewitson. They mentored the students in all kinds of ways. They got them to school in the morning and I'm, you know, literally going into a bedroom and saying, come on, out. Time to go to school. George would drive the bus. Um, made sure at the school they had breakfast and lunch, and uh, those meals were paid for by parents, but provided for the, by the school. And uh, as well as doing that, they ran the school and provided that secondary education along with the other teachers. So it was a very complete educational service that these three got. The Hewitsons were the kind of teachers you want in any and every school, whether here in Sydney or out in the bush but you especially want them in the bush where the challenges are so many. At Kalkarindi, as I said before, the stars aligned. The community actively supported the students' education and the teaching staff were committed way beyond regular school hours. And uh, also, luckily for that school at that time, he's still in the position, Mori Ryan Japata was the, uh, the chair of the school council. Mori was a teacher as well. And uh, he has a real passion for his community, for the young, men, the young men and women in the community getting educated. And so he was there, and I know Maury very well. And if Maury went round and said, you're going to school, you'd go to school as well. George Hewitson also pays tribute to the spirit of Vincent Lingiari. He used to say to his students that Vincent had fought for them to have the school, and they owed it to the great man to do the best by that school, and not to let him down. And it worked. Rhonda, Leanna and Shash made history when they completed their year 12. All three headed off to university, one to Flinders and two to the Charles Darwin University in Darwin. Now, I can't tell you exactly where Rhonda and Mishash got to in their tertiary studies. I know that they were well through them, whether they actually ticked off that degree and I'm not sure. But I can tell you that Leanna has finished her degree in cultural tourism at Flinders and is now working as a park ranger in the wonderful Gregory National Park which is actually not that far from Kalkarindi, probably about 250 kilometres, which in territory terms is pretty close. Leanna found being away from home during her university years very hard, but critically had support from her family and the university's indigenous centre, the Yungarindi First Nations Centre. Not surprisingly, she's enormously proud of her achievement and loves her work as a ranger, especially dealing with the, uh, the daily issues of park management and also the kind of, if you know Gregory National Park, it's where black and white came together in terms of history. And there's lots of wonderful old buildings, you know, being chewed up by the termites. So actually, cultural heritage is a big challenge for the Gregory National Park. When Leanna goes home, she talks to the Year 12 students and encourages them to keep going. Especially, she says, her younger brother. She's determined he's to finish school and then go to university. She tells her, brothers, her brother and his classmates that if she could do it, so can they. You could say on reflection that the story you've just heard is only about three students, and it is, and it's not many. When the problem of uh, lack of achievement for Indigenous students is so big. But that's not actually the case. The key to success in Indigenous education is getting the students, their parents and their communities involved and committed. Unless those ingredients are there, government and education departments and teachers can only do so much. In the words of uh, Mori Ryan Japata, he says, getting that kind of result won't happen overnight everywhere unless you've got the right ingredients. You've got to have a good principal like George, and he says they're pretty few and far between. And you've got to have good, good teaching staff and the students' willingness to participate 
and importantly, the backup of the community. In Kaukauri, as I said, that all came together. What we didn't expect was the ripple effect across the communities in the territory's top end. Other communities were quite clear. If those Gurindji could do it, so could they. So with support from government, other schools followed and produced significant numbers of Year 12 graduates, some of whom went on to, ter to uh, tertiary education. Two years later, in 2005, there were 106 graduates from five different schools across the top end. That ranged from Yirikawa in the east to Maningrida, Wadir, Galawiku and Kaukaringi. It was one of the great delights of being in government to attend those graduation ceremonies. The community came out, the, the graduates were fated, they were singing and dancing, and they were enormously proud communities. <clears throat> now the Paul Kelly song, From Little Things, Big Things Grow, is the story of Vincent Lingiari and the great achievement that came from the Aboriginal walk off of Wave Hill, and also the struggle that was involved along the way. It's a wonderful song and has captured not only the story of land rights but equally applies to the story of Rhonda, Leanna and Mashesh, especially when you consider how many hundreds of Aboriginal students across the territory they inspired. One of the many enduring memories I'll take away from my time in government in the territory is visiting the school at Kaukaringi and listening to a very small group of grade three and four students sing that Paul Kelly song. They knew every word of the song and they sang it with pride. Every verse, and it's a long song. And uh, even the tough among us had tears in our eyes as we watched and heard. But don't let me give you the impression that all is going well with Aboriginal education in the Territory. There are still profound challenges. Children simply not attending school, parents who aren't engaged or simply don't know how to insist their teenagers go to school, literacy and numeracy levels that are way too low, and students for whom English is a second or third language. Teacher turnover in our bush schools is too high. Attracting experienced teachers like the Hewitson is extremely difficult. But it is important to know sometimes in the picture that is, is painted of all gloom that there are successes. Maybe only small in number, but it is happening. For example, in Kalkarini now, there's a million dollar secondary facility and it was opened four years ago, with four classrooms, science lab, home economics room and offices. And the story of that new facility is happening right across the top end as, as students want to do their secondary education. So, you know, in terms of the foundation, small numbers do make a difference. Supporting each and every student with uh, a scholarship to complete their education is so important. If Three students in the Territory can inspire such a change, and we are seeing such a change. It does demonstrate that Paul Kelly was right. From little things, big things grow. Thank you.